Mississippi River boat can travel 30 kilometers downstream in three hours and can make the return trip in five hours. Find the speed of the boat in still water. We did these um, at the beginning of the semester. What do we need to know? What formula? I heard it. I heard right. What else? Something about distance. Distance equals rate times time. You have a final exam coming up. I think I'd review it. Distance equals rate times time? Okay. This is a different way of solving this problem. We can, we can do this from the methods of chapter one. But here's a different way. God bless you. We're going to keep in mind distance equals rate times time. Um, I told you before we're going to go to the question and figure out what we're asking, what we're asked to find. Find the speed of the boat in still water. So let's say X is the speed. Let's say B for boat. B is the speed of the boat. In still water, but aren't these values given for the boat in still water? Why not? We have a current. A current. Okay. So let's talk about the current. What letter do you want to use? C. C. Okay. C or R for the river current? Because if we're going downstream, we are going with the current or against the current? With. with. So that's why I notice if we go downstream, we go faster. The current's kind of pushing us as well. The boat is, has its own speed, but then the current is, you know, contributing to that speed. When we're coming back, the return trip, we're actually going not downstream, we're going upstream. So if we go upstream, that this C, the speed of the current, is working against our boat speed, right? So we need to keep that in mind. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. So, well, I need to scroll just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to make my same chart I did before. Okay, and I'm still going to label over here. I'm going to say, well, I have a trip downstream. And I also have a trip upstream. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different than what we did before, but we're still going to fill in the same things. So I want you to start with what we're looking for. Are we looking for distance, rate, or time? Rate. Right. Speed of the boat, it's not quite the same rate as here, but let's go ahead and start with that column. Okay, so if I'm going downstream, the boat has its speed, and the current works with me or against me? With. With me. So my rate here is B plus C, right? Okay. On the way back, upstream, what's my rate? B minus C. B minus C. Do y'all see the difference? Okay. And the Mississippi River boat can travel 30 kilometers, so what's that? Distance. Distance, distance downstream. And it makes the return trip, so that's still the distance upstream as well, same distance. Okay. Um, and let's see, it can make the trip downstream in three hours. So what goes here? Three. Okay, and what goes here? Five. Does everybody see how we fill in the chart? A lot of people try to do this in chapter one, fill in the chart with lots of different variables. But So this is how you do it. How do you solve it, though? That's what's a little different. We're going to look at this guy right here. Distance equals rate times time. So we're going to have an equation for downstream and an equation for upstream. For downstream, I know distance equals rate times time. So 30 equals what? B plus C times 3. Do not write this. What's wrong with this? You're only multiplying. Okay, we need both both pieces to so be multiplied by the three. Okay, we need parentheses there. Upstream, we have an equation. What's your equation for upstream? Like that? No. Put parentheses around it, right? Okay. And now we have a system of equations. Two equations, how many unknowns? How many variables are here? So I'm going to clean them up. 30, let me do it here. 
30 equals 3B plus 3C. We all see this? 3B plus C is the same as B plus C times 3. Doesn't really matter what order I multiply them in. 7 times 2 is the same as 2 times 7. Right? Okay. So I can think about distributing this way. So here I have 30 equals what? 3B minus 3C. Check it again. Oh, five. 5B minus 5C. Okay. So I have 3B plus 3C equal 30. 5B minus 5C equal 30. Okay. And how do we solve this? Multiply both of them by something? Okay. What do you want to multiply the top one by? Five, the bottom one by three. three. If you get rid of the C's, is that what you're trying to do? Because the signs are already different. Yeah. So we don't have to multiply one by a negative because the signs are already different. Okay, so we get 15B plus 15C equals what? 150, thank you. And the bottom one? 15B minus 15C equals 90, okay? Now we're going to combine these. We see that the C's are going to cancel on purpose, right? We did that by design. And how many B's do we have now? 30. 30B equals how, what is this? 60. No, we're adding, right? Oh, B is 240. So B is 8, okay? And let's go back to the question. Is that what I'm looking for, or do I also need to find, figure out what C is? You need to figure out C. I also need to figure out C? Okay. No, because it's asking yeah. the speed of the boat into water. Okay, I'm actually done. Yeah. Right? But if, if I wanted to know the speed of the current, if it said find the speed of the boat and the speed of the current, then I would find C. Here I'm actually done. Speed of the boat, eight. What are the units? Yes, boat speed, eight kilometers per hour. I feel like 